Okay, in this exercise today, we are going to go ahead and take a look at a static bioeconomic model for a fishery. And this is also a open access model. And this is going to be based on logistic growth. We've already talked about that a little bit in other videos, but just as a reminder that logistic growth has specific terms in it. One is the growth rate, so we're going to call that R, 0.1. This is the growth rate of our population. It has a carrying capacity, call that K, make that 100. And in this case, we are going to specify a population size from 0 to 100. And so our recruitment from this population size from 0 to 100 is going to go something like this. It's our growth rate times what our population is, 0 to 100. And that is, in fact, modified by this 1 minus n divided by k term. That is logistic growth. So we'll go ahead and run these things. Oh, we got a multiplier here. There we go. And what we're going to do now, just to give you a sense of this, is we're going to plot n versus rec. So that is going to be the stock size versus recruitment. So our x label going to be stock size and the Y label is going to be recruitment or the growth of the stock. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and I'll make this larger. So there it is, there's stock size, there's the recruitment or the growth of the stock, and the way to think about it is that when you have zero stock size, then you have no recruitment because you have zeros in your ends here. When you're at the carrying capacity at 100, when population is 10, that means that when population is 100, that means that 100 over 100 here is 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0, which means recruitment goes to 0. So there's some sweet spot here in the middle where we have maximum recruitment, maximum recruitment. All right, so you're familiar with that. There's another way to think about this, which is just a growth that is time dependent. So, for example, uh, in this case, we have logistic growth where we're just ascribing a stock size. But of course, what the growth rate or what the stock size is depends on recruitment. So we could make this a time dependent sequence. Let's go ahead and make time here a uh, vector from 0 to 100. Sorry, 0 to 100. And our initial stock size, we're going to call it capital X. X naught is going to be 1. Again, our growth rate, I'm just going to copy this here growth rate of carrying capacity. That looks like a carrying capacity. I spelled that. We're going to keep those the same. And what we're going to do is we're also going to have a, a, an object called x out, which is going to be our population over time and our growth out equals na. And so what these are going to do is these are going to capture the change in growth over time. Again, our initial step is going to be x1 and what the growth of that, what our growth of our population is over time. So we're going to do a little simple little for loop here. So we're going to do for i in 2 to the length of time. So we're going to do some function for length i to the uh, length of time. Remember, our time is going from 0 to 100, but uh, we're starting at 2 because we already have an initial population size in the first element here for x out. And we'll see how this works in just a minute. 
So our gross, let's call this capital G, is going to look really similar to this equation. So we're going to copy and paste this down here, except for our n is now going to be our x underscore out element i minus 1. And that's going to be the same thing here. x minus out, or x underscore out, i minus 1. So our growth is saying, check out your r. So that's coming in here. Then take your biomass from the previous time step. That's what i minus 1 is. So we're starting at 2. It's saying, take x out from the previous time step. Apply that growth rate. That's how we're going to get our growth for this time step. And then we're going to check out, this is our carrying capacity term, that's going to be dependent on the biomass on the previous time step. So that's going to be G, our G out, we're going to record this difference, and it's going to be a concatenate of G underscore out at G. Remember our first element in G out is, is an NA, so we have no growth because we don't have a time step before that. Here's G out, and we're going to add our growth, and then we're going to say here's our biomass x out i minus minus 1 plus g. So what's our new biomass size? That's what x is going to be here. It's going to be our previous one plus however much we grew. And then I'm going to take the x out vector and I'm going to concatenate whatever was in x out with x. So, and i. All right, so I think this should work. I'll take a look at it. All right, so um, what, what do we do here? We, we now have a, an x out. That's our, well, just a growth over time. We have a G out, how much we actually grew over time, and now we're going to go ahead and design a plot. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my margins a little bigger using the par function. Mar equals C555. Five, 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 five. So that's going to give us some extra space here. So I'm just going to copy this plot command here. I'm just going to edit it a little bit. In this case, I'm going to plot time versus our x out, our y lab is going to be now stock size, and this is going to be time. Oops. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. Yeah, so there's our logistic growth over time. This is what our stock is doing. So it's starting out low, and then it's growing uh, using this sort of exponential term over here. That's this Rx. And then, you know, saturates out here once the carrying capacity term really, really takes over. So we can now um, add a plot to this just to check this out. Let's do par new equals true. Let's put another plot that on top of this. And we're going to take a look at PM G out type equals L line weight equals two color equals blue, uh, axes equals false, xlab equals nothing, and ylab equals nothing. So we're gonna, what this par equals new does is that we're just going to throw a plot right on top of our existing plot, and what we see now is that this is now the growth. Um, over that time, we just need to add the right axis to it. So I'm going to go ahead and use axis. So growth is now on this axis over here, and let's add some margin text.
This should be side. I'm going to run this whole thing again here. There we go. Growth's over here. There's stock size. And now let's just add a legend. I'll put this in the top left. And let's go ahead and make it. So all this is doing here is I'm going to make two legends. The point character is going to be category one for these points. These are our open circles and then no point character for our line. And our line weight is going to equal two. Our color is going to be concatenate black and blue and our Y equals N. So no box around our legend. This should work. There we go. So there's our stock size and our stock growth. Okay. So you notice that looks a little bit different than what we were looking at before, and that's because this is time dependent. Uh, but we can replot this. We can actually replot if we want to get back to what's our recruitment versus stock size you'll see that we can go plot x out, g out. So this is our stock versus our recruitment in our time dependent sense. And x lab is going to equal, actually I can probably just pull that from up here. And I'll just make this x out and g out. So this is our time-dependent one. Let's go ahead and plot that. And you'll see, we have something really similar, really similar. And you might notice here that it looks like the curve is sort of shifted right. And especially if we compare it, in fact, let's do this. Let's just compare this to add the points from our time-independent function up here, where we're just describing biomass. Or biomass isn't sort of evolving through time or changing through time, we can see if we have points for N and recruitment. These are our other two. I want to do type equals O. Those two color equals blue. So we'll throw our, that on top. Yeah, and you can see that our, our time-dependent one, which is our black one, is shifted slightly to the right. Whereas one where we're not using time to compute is this really nice sort of symmetric symmetric shape. And the reason for that is sort of memory in the system. Remember, the time-dependent one um, is, is, is based on what the biomass is in the previous time step. And so you may see you know, some curves that are drawn like this that are shifted to the right a little bit, some that are completely symmetric. And you can actually change how symmetric they are by changing the growth rate. So if we come back here to our growth rate in our non-time dependent logistic growth and just put a point, make this 0.5, you'll see that it, it actually makes no difference. All we did was change the x-axis, but the shape is the same. But if we do this in our time dependent sense, where population is not being ascribed but is now dependent on previous time steps, you can get this instead. You can see the shift over to the right. And, and the reason basically is that you can see now that we have way fewer points here describing the curve. In fact, all, most of the points are down here. There's still 100 points, but uh, what you're seeing here is, is basically the, the time step resolution issue. So it actually, it actually uh, you know, takes a little longer to get to the, the highest recruitment rate and then drops off quickly once that, uh, once that comes. So that's based on sort of memory in the system. So we can, we can change this back to 0.1 and 
and where's that other one? There's point one there, and here we go, point one. But if um, so, so that may tell you why it is that every once in a while you may see some of these curves shifted over slightly to the right. But that shouldn't worry us here too much. That's mostly related to uh, sort of trying to capture the time dependence of the system. We're not totally interested in that today because we're dealing with a static model where we're thinking about things in equilibrium. So let's just pretend that we know that based on these curves that there's some maximum recruitment and that what we want to do is say this is we know this is our our biomass maximum sustainable yield in other words when the populations at this it stocks at this level this is when we're going to get the most yield from the fishery it's when it's most productive let's go ahead and just pretend that our harvest <coughs> is equal to growth that our growth is going to be exactly equal to harvest and change the x-axis from stock size to growth. Okay, so what does that actually mean? Well, let's just make a couple notes to ourselves. And growth in this case is logistic. Remember, growth is our uh, yeah, is our logistic curve. I'll just put that in here. So growth, let's remember our, our let's write that, we'll put this down here. We'll say it's R times whatever our stock is, X. That's what our growth is. And we know that harvest in this case is based on the catchability of fish, which is usually expressed as Q, and Q is usually some variable between 0 and 1. So the way to think about it is that you put a net in the water, if that net always catches fish, the fish that you're going for, it has a catchability of 1. If it never catches that fish, it has a catch catchability of 0. If it catches fish 50% of the time, you have a catchability of 0.5. So that's our catchability quotient, our effort, which in this case, again, is bounded between 0 and 1. And our stock size, or number of fish, which in this case is just x. In other words, This is equal to catchability times our effort times our stock. So here's growth and here's harvest. All right. There's a couple of things that we're going to need to figure out why this is important, the first thing is price. So this is just going to be the price of fish. This is going to be in dollars. And cost is going to be, let's just make this five, the unit cost per unit effort. This is also in dollars. So let's go ahead and make our harvest. In this case, let's just make this H, capital H, is our rec. And what did we say rec was? Rec was just our recruitment was from up here. So let's just make it that. So that's our, that's actually our, our blue line here. I'm just going to say this, that harvest. To growth.
we need an effort. We need to define effort. Effort is going to be a sequence between 0 and 1. And the length is going to be 101. So we're making a sequence of effort from 0 to 1. Remember, because we got to replace the stock size. Our total costs are going to be our cost per unit effort times our effort. And in fact, a lot of people will square this. We'll start with that. We'll square it. So this is our total cost is cost per effort times effort. What else do we need? R. R is going to be our revenue. How much money did we generate? That's going to be our price times our harvest. So this is revenue, price per harvest unit times total harvest. And our profit is going to be our revenue minus our total costs. Okay. So let's go ahead and run these. And now we're ready to plot some things. Let's go ahead and plot effort times revenue Okay. And surprise, surprise, it's going to look just like the growth that we had because what we have decided is that harvest is equal to our growth and our revenue is basically our price times our harvest. And right now price is one. So it looks almost identical, in fact, identical to that. Our lines, we're going to add an effort line, effort and total costs. Color is going to be red, two, okay. So this is how total cost is changing. So at first it's very small, and then after a while costs increase as we add more effort, it gets more and more costly per unit effort that we add. And P is going to be profit. All right, so here's our profit. So we'll see that profit is increasing pretty much in line with revenue, but then Costs, costs start to go up and we really start to lose profit then. And so we can define a couple of really important lines here. We can use the function which.max of our revenue. So that's going to tell us which, which value in R is the highest. It's number 51. And we can add an AB line there. Our vertical line is going to be this thing, but we want to know which effort is at that level. So we're going to put we're going to put a vertical line there. Our L type equals two. Wait, equals two. Okay. So that is our maximum revenue, and. Now we want to also add, let's figure out, let's do the same thing here, but we're going to figure out where our maximum profit is.
line type, I think I'm going to do line type equal three. All right, so this is now where we're making the most money after cost. So this is our maximum economic yield. So here's our maximum sustainable yield biologically, but to actually make the most money, you actually will be fishing at this level of effort, not at this level of effort. Okay, and the other thing that we want to find is what's called the open access point. And that is the point where total revenue equals total costs, or we have zero profit. So that's where the fisheries often tend to drift. Uh, we go to this open access point, and so to find that, um, we have to actually find the intersection between these two points. So to find the intersection of two points, we're not going to write our own function. We're actually going to borrow a function from somebody, from a guy named Rolf Turner. Somebody asked this question, how to take two points and, and find the intersections of them. You can take this function and, and copy and paste it into your code if you want. Or what we're going to do here instead is we're just going to source the function. So I've copied and pasted this function um, and saved it in a file that you can read off the internet. So if you take this thing and dump it into a web browser, This is what it looks like. So that's the function right there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and, and source that and load it in. So source is going to read this function off the internet for us. So we go ahead and run that thing. And there it is. And in fact, we can probably come over here, shrink this down a little bit, come down to functions. You can look at the function. There it is. We, we read it in as a function. And there's some, some important terms about it. X one and y1 are the coordinates of the points of the increasing curve so in this case our increasing curve is our total costs so this is going to be effort our y1 is going to be total costs our x2 this is now our decreasing curve which is going to be our revenue so that's going to be our x2 is going to be defined by effort and also by our revenue here so let's see how that would work here let's just go ahead and define that our open access point we're going to use the function find int which is a function we just read in from the internet and we're going to it's going to be e t c p e, and r so we can run that thing here is oa there is the point where they are intersecting at X and Y. So at 0.66 and 2.22, that looks about right, right there. And all we're going to do is we're going to drop a vertical line there. So we're going to use our AB line here again. And we are going to want to put in OA, the first element, which is this, this thing here. Line type is going to equal 4. There it is. There's the open access point. And it would be helpful for us to actually make a legend here. So we're going to edit some of our legend text from here. Put a legend on this guy. So it's top left. In this case, our legend is going to be four things, four curves. We're going to have revenue, total cost, Profit, our maximum sustainable yield, our maximum economic yield, and our open access point. Okay, those are the, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six curves on here. We have one here, two there, three there, and then there's three vertical lines. So our PCH values, our point character values, 
are going to be 1, and then we don't have any other point characters on these, so we just need an A, an A, an A, an A. So a total of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Our line weights are all going to be 2. Our colors, let's see, our revenue is black. Our total cost, in this case, is red. Our profit is blue. And then our next three lines, these vertical lines, are black. Let me just put three of these in here. Okay. And the last thing that we need is our line types. Our LTY. Um, so our first line, first three are all ones. They're all nice solid curves, but then we diverge into twos, threes, and fours. And that reflects our AB lines here. And I think this will work. So I run that. Nope. We have an error here. Oh, here. We need a comma. There we go. So there's our revenue. Okay. Total cost is going up. Profit is here. Maximum sustainable yield is right there. Maximum economic yield is here, and open access is this direction. And so what you can do is you can actually come back in here and mess around with some of these. Let's suppose if we increase the price from 1 to 2, that now is, should increase our profits. And you can see how that would work. Yep, and so now our profits are higher and it pushes the open access level even further over, pushes the maximum economic yield closer to the maximum sustainable yield. Or we can mess around with the effort curve. We can, let's say, take this squared term out and just make it a line. Yep, and so now it's a line and you can see how that changes based on the cost function. So we can add different shapes to these things, and you can uh, mess around with some of these prices and values and growth rates to come up with different scenarios uh, to interpret a uh, open access fishery.